Good evening, friends. Welcome to our Monday, Thursday service here at Haddonfield United Methodist Church. I welcome our folks who are live streaming and worshiping with us. We are grateful for you. Uh, tonight is a sacred night. We are really moving along in Holy Week. And Holy Week, we get to experience, relive, and retell the story of Jesus' life and passion, death that leads up to the resurrection of Easter. The word monday comes from the Latin word mandatum or commandment that according to the Gospel of John, Jesus said at the communion table to his disciples, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Monday Thursday is dedicated to the retelling of the story of Jesus' Last Supper, which in different Gospels incorporates the washing of the feet, the Last Supper, and the journey to the Garden of Gethsemane. And tonight, I decided that we would allow one single gospel to tell that story for us tonight, while all four gospels have their own version. Tonight, we are going to walk through that Thursday, that Holy Thursday, through the Gospel of Luke. I have long loved the tradition of the Tenebrae service for Good Friday, and that means the service of shadows. We have another tradition at this, this church, and so I decided that we would follow the pattern of the Tenebrae service from Monday Thursday. And that is, there's no sermon, there's no message, but we simply allow the scripture to tell the story itself. So tonight, we will hear the story of Monday Thursday through six readings from the Gospel of Luke, interspersed with songs, prayers, and we will have an opportunity to celebrate the Lord's Supper with Jesus in the context of the story as he celebrated with his disciples. So as we worship God tonight, we will be inviting you to sing songs from the Tizé community, from our own hymnal and different traditions, and you will find those um, in the bulletin on the back if they are not in our hymnal, and the numbers will be listed if they are in our hymnal. And so in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to stand and sing from our hymnal, but why don't you just take a moment and let's allow prayer to center this sacred space for us tonight. God, we are grateful for the gift of this space, for this community, for the connection of the live stream. Oh God, we come seeking to walk with and to follow Jesus even in this difficult road. We know at the table he offered himself and gives himself and he invites us. So tonight as we come to this table filled with fear, anticipation, betrayal, hurt, anxiety, hope, and joy. Oh God, that your spirit will be, at that in, uh, will be uh, in our hearts as we bring our own mixture of all those things. God, may this be a sacred moment for us, and may we feel your presence as we walk with Jesus. In Christ's name, amen. Friends, you can remain seated, but let us sing together number 292 from our hymnal, let me rephrase that. I'm actually going to invite you to stand. We sing better. If you would, let us stand as we're able and sing 292 together.
Please be seated. Good evening, friends. Our first reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 7 through 13. If you'd like to follow along, you can find the text uh, in the Pew Bible on page 86 in the New Testament. The preparation of the Passover. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for me, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparation for it? Listen, he said to them. When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover, Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. Amen. I want to invite you to join the singing of the blessed Lord. You can find the music on page four. We'll continue our reading from Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 23. When the time came, Jesus took his place at the table, and the apostles joined him. He said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I tell you, I won't eat it until it is fulfilled in God's kingdom. After taking a cup and giving thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. I tell you that from now on, I won't drink from the fruit of the vine until God's kingdom has come. After taking the bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the meal and said, this cup is the new covenant by my blood, which is poured out for you. But look, my betrayer is with me. 
His hand is on this table. The human one goes just as it has been determined, but how terrible it is for that person who betrays him. They began to argue among themselves about which of them it could possibly be who would do this. Friends, we remember tonight the sacrament of communion, not just as we have instituted it in the church, but in the context of the story. Jesus and his disciples gathered to remember that God had, re, had removed and had delivered their people, the people of Israel, out of slavery from Israel. And so gathered around a Seder or a Passover table, there Jesus and his disciples remembered just as all of those of the tribes of Judah and of Israel would have remembered. There Jesus gave new meaning and renewed meaning, remembered the covenant, and offered a new covenant. And we join in, in the context of the story, the story does not end here, but this is the center of the story. And we will invite you to participate, but we invite you now for a moment to center your hearts and to join us in spirit as we celebrate communion and share it together. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When we turned aside from your way and abused your gift, you gave us in him your crowning gift, Emptying himself that our joy might be full, he fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And at that very table of Passover, Jesus took the bread that already symbolized God's deliverance of God's people. Jesus took the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, this is my body. All that I am, all that I have, I give it to you. Each time you eat this bread, remember me. Jesus would have taken the kiddush cup that symbolizes the fullness of life, the blessing of creation. He blessed it and gave it to his people, his disciples, and said, this is my damim, my blood, my life force given for you each time you drink it. Remember me. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for these gifts and for the gift of each person gathered here virtually and in person. God, we pray that you'll pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of Christ. Pour out your Spirit on us so we may become and live as the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Oh God, make us one with you, make us one with each other, and make us one with all of creation as we join our hearts and our lives in common ministry as we proclaim together the mystery of our faith that Christ has died, Christ, Christ has risen, risen, and Christ, Christ will risen. come again. We pray this in the name of God, the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer. Amen. Amen. I love celebrating communion in the context of the gospel because the cup is not shiny, it's not fancy, it's not big and lofty and long-winded. In the gospel, we remember that there were political foes at the table. Amen? There was a tax collector, a zealot, a betrayer, the one who held the purse, the one who cared about the mission, the one who worried about the bottom line, the one who thought they weren't doing enough, 
and the one who thought they were doing too much, and everyone in the middle. And Jesus denied no one. We want to invite you in a moment to come forward as you feel led, and we will offer you a piece of bread, which is gluten-free bread, and you can dip it into the cup, which is grape juice, return to the table. We also have pre-sealed gluten-free and grape juice elements if you would prefer to take them at your seat. All those who hunger and thirst, who are tired of fighting, tired of trying, tired of needing to be in control, and are ready to give ourselves over to the master who says, come and be filled. Let us come. to the 
Heart with mine. O oh, loving and gracious God, thank you so much for this table of love, forgiveness, and table of grace you pour out upon us, who is gathering here to experience your love and mercy and grace. Speak to us loudly and whisper us sometimes so that our hearts can understand you and experience your love deeply and widely in our lives. Help us to reflect your light in our own lives so that others can see and feel the warmth of your love and warmth of your grace uh, with us. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen. The story continues with verse 24, the dispute about greatness. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in trials, and I confer on you just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. I invite you to remain seated and let us sing number 521 together.
The following text comes from God, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 31 through 38. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to shift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he, had, he, had, he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not a thing. He said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lotless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. Let us sing together the song, Wait for the Lord, on page 4. We continue our story with verses 39 through 46. Jesus left and made his way to the Mount of Olives, as was his custom, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived, he said to them, pray that you won't give in to temptation. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. He said, Father, if it's your will, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not my will, but your will must be done. Then a heavenly angel appeared to him and strengthened him. He was in anguish and prayed even more earnestly. His sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he got up from praying, he went to the disciples. He found them asleep, overcome by grief. He said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray so that you won't give in to temptation.
We want to pray together as Jesus prayed in Gethsemane when his heart was troubled. So would you please join your heart with mine in prayer. A loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of this time to meditate on your word and listen to the story of Jesus in remembrance of your, your mighty acts in him, our Christ. As Jesus emptied and humbled himself to fulfill your promise to the point of death on the cross, help us follow your way of love and compassion with joyful obedience. Awake us, O Lord, from the sleep of our soul. Save us, O Lord, from trials and tribulations. Shine your light through us, O Lord, in the deep darkness in the world. We long for you. We search for you. We wait for you. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. The Betrayal and Arrest of Jesus. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Let us continue to sing, wait for the Lord.
as we have journeyed with Jesus to the table and to the garden, tomorrow we will journey with him to Pilate and to Calvary and even to the tomb. But as we go tonight, let our prayers remember, and may we remember that Jesus journeys with us through the valley. And hear these words as we leave from the Gospel of John's account of the Last Supper. Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I do not call you servants any longer. Because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask of him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Let us go forth to love and serve.